ಓಕ್ರದುಂಡುಮಹಾಕಾಯ ಸೂರ್ಯಕೋಟಿಸಮಪ್ರಭ ನಿರ್ವಿಘ್ನ ಕುರು ಮೇ ದೇವ ಸರ್ವಕಾರ್ಯು ಸರ್ವದ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ನಮಸ್ತುಭ್ಯ ವರದೆ ಕಾಮಿ ವಿದ್ಯಾರಂಭಂ ಕರ್ಷ್ಯಾಮಿ ಸಿದ್ಧು ಮೇ ಸದಾ ಗುರುಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಗುರುವಿಷ್ಣು ಗುರುದೇವ ಮಹೇಶ್ವರ ಗುರು ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ಪರಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ಸಹನಾವತು ಸಹನೋಭ್ಯ ಸೀರ್ಯಂಕರವಾವಹೈ ತೇಜಸ್ವಿಧಾವಧಿ ತಮಸ್ತಮಾವಿಷಾವಹೈ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಪರಮಾತ್ಮನೆ ನಮಃ ಅಥ ಭಗವಾನ್ಶ್ಲೋಕೋರ್ಥ್ಲೋಕೋಯ ಅಚಲೋಯ ಸನಾತನ ಅಚಲೋಯ ಸನಾತನ The last shloka visa atma nainam chindante shastrani enam atma na shastrani weapons do not cut air cannot drag it fire cannot burn water cannot bit it means atma sat not subject to any change not subject to any change not touched by asat not touched by these bhutas or bhutikas so atma na hanyate sharire anyamane therefore atma is not an object since it is not accessible for any of this why because why because atma is atma is sat and therefore mitya cannot touch the satya atma cannot bring about a change in the satya atma in fact this mitya enjoys existence because of which that is atma that is sat the same idea is presented here achedhyoyam defining atma atma is nitya sarvagatah achalah shashvatah now it is achedya ವ್ಯವಹಾರ i am hurt i have this experience and that experience is only for the shariram not for the atma the death is only for the shariram change is only for the shariram not for atma therefore atma is nitya ever changeless sarvagatah not confined to the shariram alone the periphery of this body alone and it is thanuhu it is thanuhu like an anvil it is thanuhu it is the adishtana the adara it is tanahu and it is achalaha it cannot move it cannot move means what it is in is it in coma no 
There is no place where it is not. Therefore, you cannot move. Everywhere, what is there is only Atma. Therefore, immovable. And it is eternal forever. Forever it is. It is. It is there. The changeless or the all pervasiveness. It is all these are eternal. That which is eternal. So therefore, Atma cannot be cut, cannot be burnt, drowned or dried. It is changeless, all-pervading, stable, immovable and eternal. So this self, this self, Atma, Atma, that Atma is myself. So to replace by I am Atma, by Aham. That is what here. Aham, when the Aham, the Ahankara, when the Aham is identified with Sharira, then Jeevatva, minus that, what is Aham is, the Jeeva, Shuddha Aham, that is Atma. So therefore the word I am in this shloka refers to the self-evident Atma, self-existent, self-evident Atma, not a non-existent Atma, not an Atma, not Shunya. Self-evident means that which doesn't require any means of knowledge to prove its existence. Therefore, only Shastram also doesn't prove Atma, doesn't establish Atma. Shastram can only remove Ajnana Mitraka to Atma. Atma alone is self-evident. Everything else becomes evident to the Atma. To say I am doesn't require perception, inference, presumption, illustration, or the means of knowledge called Anupalabdhi, that which helps you understand what doesn't exist. Even to understand what doesn't exist requires someone who is existent to use the anupal of the pravana. For example, in order to know that there is no pot in my hand, there must be perception and a person who reveals that perception. So therefore, even for anupal of the atma has to be there. Only to the atma everything is evident. Atma is self-evident and everything is evident to this atma. Minus this, even Perception or operation of pravana is not possible. Inference, a means of knowledge based on perception, pratyaksha, also presupposes a person who wields the inference, operates the inference. Whatever the means of knowledge, there must be someone to wield it. To say that the object is in your hand, it's a feather, the object in your hand is a feather and it belongs to a peacock, it requires a means of knowledge your own perception and your prior knowledge of a peacock feather. You perceive the object directly and recognize it as a feather. Similarly, to prove the existence of any object, a means of knowledge is necessary. Even to perceive that my physical body is not the same as it was yesterday requires a means of knowledge. How do you know you have a stomach ache, back pain, or that you ache all over? Since you cannot show the ache to anyone, no one can verify it. This is why it this is why body ache and back pain are so useful in applying for leave. Even an orthopedic specialist cannot say whether there is an ache or not, because it is purely your own experience. You alone are the witness, the sakshi for all this. Witness perception, sakshi pratyaksha is another type of perception that doesn't involve the senses, but still is a perception. Like anger, anger, emotions, pain, etc. That is known only to you, the witness Sakshi Pratyaksha it is called. Pratyaksha, two types. Pratyaksha, perception, Sakshi Pratyaksha. That is also a perception, type of perception. We can only talk about these various conditions of the body if you have a way of knowing them. Similarly, since you talk about your mind, you must have some way of knowing it. There must be some perception by which you know the mind. That you have set in memories is purely because the programming is there, even though it might not always serve your purpose. Even to know that you have forgotten something is a perception. Everything is evident to me because I have a means of knowing. But what, but by what means do I know that I am? Do I know I am by perception, by scripture, by shastram, by the senses, indriyani, by inference? Arthapati, no. I am there before them all. Because I am, I can infer. 
I am and therefore I can see and hear. That I am is self-evident. And because I am, all knowledge is possible. Therefore, Atma is not non-existent. It is not non not non-existent. One thing alone, Atma alone is self-evident. So that's Siddhaha. Therefore, I am is a very important word here, referring as it does to that which is not the object of any destruction, Achedya. Bhagavan Krishna kept repeating it because the Atma is not zero, not Shunya. It is not non-existent like the son of a barren woman. The Atma is all-existent, self-existent, and is not subject to slain, burned, drowned, or dehydrated. It is timeless, nitya, and thus all pervasive. Sarva Gataha. Anything that is time bound, anitya, is not Sarva Gata. Even space is not all pervasive. Space is all pervasive only with reference to the world. But it doesn't pervade the Atma because Atma is consciousness. And in the consciousness, there is no space. But then, when space is there, consciousness also is there. Therefore, space doesn't pervade the Atma. But Atma pervades a space. Therefore, Atma is Sarvagata. Taitya Upanishad, the chanting that we learned, the Tasma, the Tasma, Atmana Akasha Sambhutaha, Akasha Dvayu, Ayo Ragnihi, <coughs> that Tasma, the Tasma, Atmanaha, from Atma, Akasha has come. From Akasha Vayu, from Vayu Agnihi, even the Akashma is a product. It has come from Atma only. Therefore, Atma pervades space. Karanatva, Ati Sukshmatva. Karanasyapi Karna. Space is the Karanam from which all the other elements have come. And Karanam of space, the Karanam of space is Atma. Therefore, in space, Therefore, in space there is no Atma, but in Atma, everything is space also is. That's what he said. In space there is no Atma means not that Atma is not there. There is nothing. In space there is no Atma means Atma is not contained or confined by the space. And in the Atma, everything is space also is. Then again, Atma cannot move. It is Tanu. How can it move? Where it can move? It can only to move to a place where it is not. Since Atma is Sarvagata, it is Tanu. It doesn't move. It is always the same. Here one may think perhaps Atma is like a tree, staying in one place, but, sway, but swaying. No, we are told. Unlike the tree, it doesn't sway. It is Achala. So two words, sthanu also, sthanu means also means post, but here it is sthanu means stable. Is it stable like a tree, like a post, but it is moving, shaking? No, achala, it cannot do, it cannot move. Where it can move? Krishna also described the Atma as, as that, which remains the same always, it is sanatana. It is not brought into being by some force or cause. It is not affected in any way by anything. That Atma is always the same, always fresh, always new. Knowing the Atma in this way, there is no reason for you to entertain any grief. Therefore, only Ashochya and Vashochastam, there is no legitimate reason for Dukkham. But you may say, I don't cry for Atma, I cry for Anatma. To which Krishna would ask, why would you cry for Anatma? It is always changing, Anitya. Anatma is always going and you cannot stop it even if you want to. Whereas Atma is always Nitya and there is no way of destroying it. For what do you grieve? A hey, Harjuna, Krishna asked. There is no room for grief at all. There is something to be done. Do it. This constant refrain is again sounded in the next shloka. Another beautiful shloka. Let us read. Which describes Atma. Avyakto yamachintyo yam. Avyakto yamachintyo yam. Avikadyo yamuchyate. Avikayo yamuchyate. Tasma devam viditvainam. Tasma devam 
ಅವಿಕಾರ್ಯಾತ್ಮಾಕಾರಿ you don't you ought not you don't deserve to grieve you should not grieve the this self is said to be unmanifest not an object of thought not subject to change therefore knowing this you should not grieve vyakta means vyakta refers to vyakta means change manifest vyakta refers to anything that is manifest that which is manifest that which is an object of perception an object of the sense organs therefore that which is manifest when we say it is not an object of the sense organs therefore avyakta sense organs cannot objectify it therefore atma is referred to here as avyakta not available as an object for perception it is it is not a an object it is akarta and akarma if atma is not an object of one's perception is it perhaps an object of inference because it is not an object of perception therefore question comes how do you know it maybe by inference no says lord krishna atma cannot be an object of inference also because it is not an object of thought it is achintya atma is self evident thus the word achintya doesn't mean that the atma is not available for understanding also atma cannot be an object of inference or perception because without the atma perception and inference are not possible in addition to not being an object of sense perception avyakta not an object of inference achintya the atma also doesn't undergo any modification whatsoever avikriya it is not like milk that undergoes a change to become yogurt the milk gains a new taste sourness so sourness sourness and its smell as well as form undergoes undergoes a change because milk is subject to change it is said to be vikarya previously it was in one form and now it is in another the same object that was milk before is yogurt now unlike milk the atma does undergoes no change you cannot say that previously atma was happy and now it is sad because no change is possible for the atma due to aviveka however one takes one self atma to be subject to change but because it has no avayava no parts no attributes it cannot undergo any change that which has avayava parts alone can undergo change that which has avayava alone can do karma and also can become an object of karma that undergoes change therefore vikara therefore subject to birth and death but atma doesn't have any away of atma has no attributes one may say that satchit and ananda are the attributes of atma satyam jnana anantam brahma void and sat not become asat chit not become achit and ananda not become dukha this doesn't happen because satchit and and ananda they are not attributes as such they are the lakshanas not visheshanas words that convey the meaning by implication that is what lakshana lakshana is padi atma atma is a lakshya that which is being implied the implied meaning is the very nature the swarupa of the atma attributes are something other than the swarupa of the atma, swarupa of an object that which is sat is that which is chit is sat and also ananda atma is not a substantive enjoying certain attributes it is not a visheshya enjoying certain visheshanas so therefore in fact atma is free from all attributes therefore they are not visheshana they are lakshana if sat were to be an attribute then where would the substantive be 
if sat is a visheshana and where the visheshya is what will be the visheshya the qualified the substantive itself is sat so its swarupa is also sat thus sat is not an attribute of atma similarly chit is not an attribute of atma sat is chit existence is consciousness and chit is sat in consciousness when we say it is is that is sat chit stands for consciousness and this is what is we call a sat what is there is only consciousness the so consciousness is consciousness is existence so existence when we say it is consciousness and it is not limited therefore ananta therefore ananda the other lakshana because the atma is limitless the word ananda also comes in to imply its swarupa so satchit ananda or swarupa are the words used to reveal the swarupa of the atma they are not the lakshana that is why the implied the lakshya arrived at by these words the words which convey the meaning by implication atma is said to be avikarya not subject to modification at any time because it doesn't have attributes to change its such subject itself to change another reason the atma cannot undergo change is because it is not in time atma has always been as it is now all of this has been said about the atma by those who know the shastra this being so knowing the atma as it has been revealed so far correct our thinking i thought i was a body mind sense complex karya karana sankhata and therefore a mortal a doer a, an enjoyer a sukhi dukhi one moment happy and the next unhappy knowing the atma as it is as sachit ananda all the previous notions about atma are given up thus krishna told arjuna you have no reason for grief shochitum na arghasi the literal meaning of na arghasi is you do not qualify we do not qualify to be sad because we know that atma is not subject to death and that there is only one atma not many arjuna had told krishna that he was grieving because bhishma and drona would die therefore only he said it should be katham it should be pratyotsyami puja arha vari sudana they are they deserve worship how can i kill them to this krishna responded by saying that arjuna did not qualify to have any grief because no one really dies if, if no one really dies what is the use of grief how can he kill bhishma and drona really people keep going even though they all disappear they come back in different forms given this explanation arjuna could have well come back with i am not really worried about the atma it may be eternal but i cannot shake hands with atma nor can i enjoy or talk with sachidananda atma whereas i can with bhishma i am going to miss sachidananda in the form of bhishma i am not grieving for the sake of atma thus if arjuna's grief was not for the atma it was for anatma even then krishna said grief is useless why anatma has to be either nitya or anitya obviously it cannot be nitya as anitya anatma is constantly born and is always dying to be born means it has to give up the previous form and giving up the previous form is what is called death therefore birth itself implies death and every death implies birth and that is what is said in the, the next shloka then krishna presented this argument अथचैनम नित्ययातम अथचैनम नित्ययातम नित्यं वा मन्यसे स्मृतम् नित्यं वा मन्यसे मूर्धम् तथा पेत्पम् महाभाहो नैवं शोचितुमर्गसि shochi to marhasi atha atha is a supposition suppose if enam that is atma nityam nitya jatam nityam va manyase vrtam suppose it is subject to continuous birth and death tathapi tum mahabaho mahabaho tum shochi tum nahrasi you don't deserve to worry for this why 
whether you look upon this atma in keeping with the body as always born continuously born birth after birth or as dying all the time death after death you don't qualify to have grief the point krishna was making here is that if atma is being born all the time why be afraid of death because anything which dies has to come again bishma and everyone else will be born again in some other form and if the atma is always dying which death are you crying for always dying always subject always it is born also therefore there is no death for which you qualify to be sad what is dying keeps dying you only see a fact thus there is no question of sorrow with reference to birth or death dasat cannot be stopped by you how are you going to stop that which is born by time anitya no one is going to stop it in fact as krishna tells him later that the people arjuna was grieving for were already as good as dead therefore he was not going to destroy anyone nor could he hope to keep alive the people for whom he was grieving however if arjuna could take them all as atma there would be no death for himself or anyone else moreover if he continued to take the atma to be anatma the body deha he could not do anything about its going he would have to say that people were either always born or always going to think that they were always born would not cause him any sorrow and if they were always going there is no new going because always going is going always going is always going since there is no new going what is there for us not to cry out to cry about for the one who is born there is death for the one who is dead there is birth even in this sense krishna said there is no room for sorrow the next shloka begins which we'll see in the next class yatasya hi dro mrtihu ओम पूर्णमदूर्णमीद पूर्णमुदच्यते पूर्ण से पूर्णमाधा पूर्णमेवशिष्य ओं शाति 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 हरि ओं श्री गुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओं धन्यवाद